Hey everyone, I'm Krista Seiden, and I'm here today with Breen Baker, who's a product manager on Google Analytics. Thanks so much for being here, Breen. Thanks for having me, Krista. Of course. So today, Breen is gonna walk us through best practices for setting up your Google Analytics 4 property. Now, when you set up a Google Analytics 4 property, you actually wanna think of this in a different way than you might've set up your universal analytics property. And so because of that, it's very important to think about a number of things and Breen is gonna walk us through what those are. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Breen. Thanks, Krista. So we wanted to start by making clear that best practices really do vary based on your desired control, your organization. If you have legal and or regulatory requirements, or any other governance need. Um, but we can go over our common recommendations and what we see. First, the key point is apps very do ma much matter. The limitation on having a link between uh, a Firebase app and a single GA4 property dictates a lot of decisions if you do have an app. So our common recommendation is that we have one account per company. This is because the account is really the over arching control structure, access control structure for all users that have access to any of the properties underneath. So we recommend one so that it has uh, reduced overhead. Second, we recommend one property per brand or business unit. So this would be uh, truly a, a separate team, different uh, brand um, or, or business line within a broader company. And we do mean truly separate um, because sub properties uh, would be uh, properties in general, but also sub properties are created for specific teams to get access to specific sets of data. So if there is overlap, um, then we'd actually recommend combining that. Rollups uh, should be used to further unify the data. So you, if you do have the need for both a subset set of people to see a subset of data and to have a combined view of the data, we would recommend one property per brand and then a rollup above that. And then lastly, we don't recommend creating a subproperty necessarily for every organizational need. We recommend subproperties for governance needs where a team really is not allowed to see the data uh, from the broader property or of another subproperties subset. Uh, if you don't have those needs, we actually recommend that you use report collections, which are a way to organize data within a property for a team without the need, need to actually silo that team from everything else. So here we find uh, one of our common examples of uh, a, a company with multiple apps in different regions and the desire to roll those up. So in this case, we'll create a roll up property to unify that data above all three of those apps. Now, the beautiful part of this is that a roll up property is just like any other property and processes and unifies uh, user identifiers if there is dual usage across multiple apps. So if you do have a multi-app company and you wish to bring the data together into a rollup to see how users interact across those apps, you're gonna get a deduplicated user view uh, in that rollup, which is a really nice uh, feature. Important considerations, we'll start with apps. Apps are very important. And again, that's because of the one-to-one -one limitation where a single Firebase app can only be linked to a single GA4 property. Because of that, if you have a brand with multiple apps, you're going to need multiple ordinary properties. And if you wanna see that data above all of those apps, you'll need a rollup. And of course, if these apps are global and you have regional teams, you're gonna want sub properties below the ordinary properties. Governance requirements. These are also very key. Obviously you have to follow through with legal and regulatory requirements. And if you have any need to share data with the team that is not allowed to see the other data, then without a feature like sub properties, uh, you would not be able to achieve that goal. Um, so governance re requirements are the second major consideration you'll wanna uh, think about when you're creating a property. Organizational structure. Obviously, again, if you have different teams focused on different business lines, business units, uh, and they are competing, then you're going to want to separate that. That's a governance need. However, if you, if you have teams that are not competing and just need to be focused, you're gonna wanna use report collections. And then lastly, certainly not least, additional costs. Sub properties and rollups both come with the same 0.5 per event additional cost for every event process in that sub or rollup property. So with that additional cost, 
You're not going to want to create a sub and a rollup property for every different reporting need you have. Uh, for that, you'd want report collections. You're going to want to use subs and rollup properties when you're breaking out uh, data for teams that need to be isolated or rolling up data into a parent company. Common patterns we tend to see are regional divisions. So a, a brand uh, broken up by regions is a very common pattern we see where the brand has a single collecting ordinary property and many sub properties based on the regions and our countries they support. Another common pattern is a rollup that covers multiple brands. This is especially common with our app clients where they have multiple ordinary properties uh, to service their multiple apps. Uh, third, we see uh, the agency or sub team model. So this is where you have a team that's focused on a subset of data and really should not be looking at the broader set of data either for regulatory or competitive reasons. You will definitely want to use a sub property for a use case like that where you can isolate a subset of data collected by the broader ordinary property and not give access to the rest. And then last, we do see specifically like for teams that have a very fine focus, we'll want to think through governance or organization and choose whichever it is. If we have governance needs, uh, maybe it's a team that's looking across multiple brands and it's just not appropriate to have any other team view that kind of access, then we might need to use sub properties and possibly rollups in conjunction to create an isolated set of data that combines data across brands for them. If I don't have those governance needs though, then it works very easily just to create a set of report collections and point that team at that set of reports. Thanks so much, Breen, for walking us through those best practices for setting up your account structure in Google Analytics 4. A lot of really important things to think through as you go ahead and set this up and a lot of great tips to help make your structures successful. So with that, I hope you can implement some of these really good best practices and successfully set up your Google Analytics 4 properties.